I realized last week that I don't appear to have a video on my YouTube series about how to make beading. I thought I did, but I can't find one, so I'm going to assume that I don't and talk about making beading today. For those of you who don't know, beading is leather wrapped around a cord. If you work with fabric, you're probably familiar with the term piping. So piping is fabric wrapped around a cord and then placed in a seam and beading is leather wrapped around a cord and run along an edge. One of the main differences between working with leather and fabric is that leather has to be skived on the edge. You have to thin leather at an angle along an edge, otherwise you get a bump or a ridge where pieces join. I'm going to cut what I call a beading strip. It's just a strip of leather that's about 5 eighths of an inch wide. So in my book about leather inlay and overlay, sometimes I'll talk about cutting a beading strip. That's what it is. Do notice as I'm skiving, I'm always holding behind the knife. I never skive with my thumb in front of the knife. It's an excellent way to get your thumb sliced open. Now I find that wide skiving is a little bit harder to learn, but the good news about wide skiving is anytime you're wide skiving, it's going to go under another piece of leather. So as long as you only make little mistakes, you'll be good. This is quarter inch double sided tape, and I'm going to run this along the edge and I will show you this is not exactly on the edge. It's about a sixteenth of an inch away from the edge. That's the spacing for the double-sided tape and the edge. Now you can do this with glue, but it's a lot messier. I highly recommend double-sided tape for making beading. And the reason I didn't put the double-sided tape right on the edge is when I fold it over, I'm going to match the other edge with that edge of the double-sided tape, not the other edge of the leather. What happens when you have two skives and you put them right on top of each other, then you make them thick again. But if you stagger your skived edges, you still have a smooth skive. And now for the wrapping it around the cord part. There is a very specific way I hold my hands to do this. And I think if you just follow my instructions and copy my hand motions, it will make it easier instead of trying to figure, out, figure it out on your own. I've never seen a student instinctively do this correctly or do it in a way that worked. My beading cord is number 346 nylon thread. Obviously, if you want fatter beading, you can use fatter cord. But for my cowboy boots, I like 346. So I'm going to start by positioning it in the middle and rolling it over. And now I have a beginning. Okay, at this point, what everyone wants to do is try to carefully lay the cord in the center and if they're using glue they want to try to glue it in the center and then fold it over a whole bunch at a time 
and that's not going to work. You're going to get huge wrinkles and your beading starts going in a curve. What you want to do is wrap the beading cord around your finger so that you can hold this thread taut. That is the whole secret to making good beading is holding the thread taut as you place it in the center. It won't stay if there's slackness. The secret to getting it in the center is holding it tight and pushing it into the center. So, see how my forefinger is on the thread? Forefinger on the thread, thumb folds it on, over, other forefinger smooths. Forefinger, thumb, smooth. Hold the cord taut, press it into the center with your forefinger, roll it over with your thumb, smooth it down with your other forefinger. Make sure when you fold it over, you're not going all the way to the edge. Your goal is for this edge that you're folding over to meet the tape edge, not the other side of the leather. Also, notice that I'm only doing about half an inch at a time. I'm not trying to do the whole thing. because So just work your way down a little bit at a time, and after a while, this little bit of at a time will become such a natural motion for you that it won't take long at all. And then when you're through, instead of pounding it flat, which will flatten the cord, what you want to, what you want to do is run your hammer right up into that cord to smooth it and press the cord into the fold. This also works to define that cord and make it stand out. That way when you put the beading along an edge, it has a nice well-defined cord to cover that edge. Okay, this is sort of like a Steve Irwin, Coyote Peterson-like segment where we're going to be encountering some fabrics, some leathers, some items out in the wild. And I'm going to get Will up close. I'm going to wrestle with him a little bit. I'm going to touch these things. Okay, so we see, we see the soft thing in its natural habitat. This is a soft sweater. I'm gonna I'm gonna touch it and see if it's actually soft. Ooh, ooh. Yes, this one is soft. This one is a good girl. This is a soft. Okay, these are some purses. They're displayed here. They're leather. <laughs> Just gonna. Uh, uh, yeah, that's not leather. This one, you probably can't see, you probably can't see up close enough, but this one is obviously plastic. It has, it has that, like, woven pattern to it. Ooh. I'm really taking one for the team here, using my own hands. Plaids, we have red plaid and blue-gray plaid. None of them, none of them are soft. They're all scratchy. I was hoping that like the different plaids, like one of them would be made out of a different material, but men just don't get to have nice fabric. Where's an MRA when you need one? This is what they should be upset about. This is a travesty. This over here is okay. The inside is okay. Nah, no, the inside is okay. So I'm just gonna reset my hand. 
over here we have some shoes and a blanket. We're going to test if these are really as soft as they appear and claim. The shoes are okay. This is pretty soft, but it's also really thin. It's only just a little bit of soft over the regular shoe. Also pretty thin and wispy. This one isn't even as soft. What about this blanket over here? The blanket is pretty soft. I give that a pretty good blanket rating, but this is still the softest. Okay, I made mom touch this, so now I have to touch it too. I know it's not gonna be soft at all, but I made her touch the bad thing, so now I have to touch it. Mmm. Mmm, it's the fake sparkly. Oh, this has sequins. It's the it's the glued on sequins. I like the sequins where you can move it one way and then the other to make it like different colors. I have a pillow like that, but this is just bad. This is a bad. Okay, and so for the last of our soft investigation, our soft rating, uh, I have discovered some teddy bears out in the wild. I'm gonna approach and touch one of these yes. teddy bears. Oh, my dear, girls. Let me ask. Not soft.